<laughs> Bangkok's famed street chefs like to hit Klum Toy Market early for farm fresh bundles of basil, bok choy, coriander, lemongrass, chili. You can't beat the prices. After Wuhan, Asia's wet markets earned a bad reputation. Most don't sell wild animals, though. You won't find barbecued rats or bats in Klong Toy. That said, the meat section's not recommended for those with a hangover. This morning, goat's heads, pig's trotters, piles of intestines, clipped chicken feet, all freshly butchered. And then there's the really fresh stuff. Live fish fresh in, live frogs in bags. And on the east end, the poultry department. Many will find these scenes distressing. The birds are distressed. But this is how it's always been done over here. Some say it's no more cruel or dangerous than factory farming. But mixing ducks, geese and chickens like this, well, it's how avian flu can spread and other virulent zoonotic diseases. Across East Asia, though, other markets with sections selling wild meat are ripe for cross-species transmission of novel pathogens. These pictures, filmed this month by investigators in Indonesia, show bushmeat still on sale. Animal rights advocates and anti-trafficking groups say the COVID crisis presents the most compelling argument ever for an outright global ban on the wildlife trade. Underneath these green roofs down here is one of the biggest wild exotic animal markets in Asia. We're overlooking Chattachak Market in the heart of Bangkok. Ordered to close a month ago, but we discovered still open despite the public health emergency. And the animals down there will be ostensibly sold legally, but a lot of them are actually illegal. On top of that, you've got animals from all kinds of parts of the world crouched together in hot conditions, uh, mixing germs and other things, and uh, also in very in in inhumane conditions as well. So it's very dangerous and very bad for the animals. It's also dangerous for people. They might be bringing in some kind of disease, a pathogen for which we have no immune response, and, and boom, you get a viral explosion. Wearing two covert cameras, we went into Chattachak a labyrinthine maze of alleyways lined by shops selling exotic birds next to poultry, even vultures destined for the cooking pot. Animals from across the continents, some trafficked, some bred. African grey. I know for a fact that the African greys are smuggled in through southern Thailand. Meerkats, crammed in, stacked high. So these are $1,000, raccoons. What's this guy down here? as a prairie dog. She just showed us a, a bush baby. Yes, she's connected. Even though the market had been officially closed during lockdown, about a third of the shops were still trading. We saw tortoises from Africa and India, blue-bearded lizards from Australia, Burmese pythons, and these tiny sugar gliders from New Guinea. In a closed shop, a rare African serval cat. We gotta go. Steve Golster, who's been on the case here for years, has been recognized. We move on. What on earth are these? Biggest rodent in the world, capybara from South America. It's basically the size of a dog, and it's pretty expensive. She just said it's a, uh, so this is about $3,500. Thailand's long been a global hub of the international commercial wildlife trafficking industry. It's worth countless billions of dollars a year. And it's in places like this that the next pandemic could start. No wonder campaigners call COVID Mother Nature's revenge. We told Bangkok's top wildlife enforcement official what we'd filmed. He said a stricter new law with harsh penalties was passed just before COVID hit. ไม่มีการค้าก็แสดงว่าไม่มีอุปสงค์อุปทานในการเชิงพาณิชย์นั้นการบังคับใช้กฎหมายเนี่ยเป็นเรื่องลำบากโดยส่วนตัวผมก็
But the problem with that is, is the wildlife trade isn't simple. It's an incredibly complex system. It, it involves thousands of species being traded all over the world for, for things as diverse as food and medicine and, and pets. Um, and, and we have to, I think, move past this idea that there is this one simple solution that can, can fix this. And can Another Oxford researcher received death threats again. this week and, after espousing and, this and view in a prevent, newspaper. Uh, the, we need to kind of take a, an approach that looks more at the situations. So preventing uh, these kind of low welfare, poor hygiene methods of sale and also um, avoiding the trade in, in high risk species. <laughs> What's not in question is that live animal markets mixing species in jam-packed conditions are potentially lethal. After HIV, Ebola, SARS, MERS, bird flu, swine flu, and now COVID-19, this planet needs a solution before the next outbreak hits.